As you know from the program, I'm Greg Peterson, Chairman of the Board and President of the Robert H. Jackson Center. As you know, it's obvious we're here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Center. In 10 years, where has it all gone? It's been really 10 years since a group of visionaries, including Carl Kappa, Betty Lene, Tom Cardman representing a Chuck Hall-led Gebby Foundation board, and Phil Morris met together to brainstorm as to what kind of institution would best honor Robert H. Jackson, a man who embodies the American dream, because as we know, he never went to college, never formally graduated from law school, and became the answer to the Jeopardy question, named the only man in the history of the United States who became a Solicitor General, Attorney General, and a United States Supreme Court Justice, our guy, Robert Jackson. And on top of that, he was the chief American prosecutor of the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. This is an amazing achievement. And I dare say, if we took a poll among those in our community probably 10 years or more ago, we probably would have known a little bit about Robert Jackson in the sense that he was at Nuremberg, not sure when or what he did. He was a justice of the Supreme Court, not sure when and what he accomplished. And he is buried in Frewsburg. And those would probably been the core values of most everybody, including myself. I'm pleased to say that during this last 10 years, I think we have a little greater knowledge of Robert H. Jackson, and it's a tribute to everybody who is out here in this particular audience. It was 10 years ago when my wife, Cindy, and the three children who are in front of me here shook their heads, but acquiesced to committing their time and energy in pursuit of such a project of honoring Robert H. Jackson. It was 10 years ago when my firm, Phillips Lytle, similarly agreed to permit me to undertake this project. And I want to pause and thank Paul Zyduck, Bob Green, Dave McNamara, Morgan Graham, who managing partners all, who permitted this to happen on part of Philip Slidell's time to, for the Robert Jack Center, and I want to thank them very much. <laughs> and similarly to my partners, John Tabor and Marty Idzik, who've humored me the whole time, and I appreciate that. <laughs> it was 10 years ago when an incredible visionary in Dan Bratton recently retired as president of Chautauqua Institution, took the mantle as our first executive director, and even after he was diagnosed with, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, continued to guide the mission and vision statements, which have been the template for all of our activities over the last 10 years. It was Dan Bratton's leadership, which influenced the extraordinary efforts of subsequent executive directors, Raleigh Kidder, Don Greenhouse, and now his son, Adam Bratton. It was 10 years ago when our first volunteers offered to help, to help us on, with this endeavor, and even though they were not quite sure where it all would lead, a few souls became many. And as you can look in the program in the center section, two full pages of names of individuals and organizations which have given of their times and talents for this project. It was 10 years ago when our first board, consisting of Carl Kappa, Betty Lene, Judge Willard Cass, and Robert H. Jackson's nephew, Harold Adams, met to create out of whole cloth an institution. It was 10 years ago that Jeanette Carlson and Randy Sweeney became with me the first officers of this organization and have continued in that capacity through this day. It was 10 years ago when our board propitiously decided that the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation would be the Robert H. Jackson Center Foundation of Choice. And they have supported us in so many ways over this past 10 years. It was the 10 years ago when we started our very first program, being the presentation by the first biographer of Robert H. Jackson, Eugene Gerhardt on Law Day, 
May of 2001, which set the tone for programming over the next 10 years, which included the dedication ceremony on May 17, 2003, presided over by Chief Justice of the United States and a former Jackson law clerk, William Rehnquist, a date we will not soon forget. It was 10 years ago when we had the good fortune to meet Professor John Q. Barrett, a person who has dedicated his academic life to advance the world's knowledge of Robert H. Jackson and has guided us in so many ways. Visits by Justice Jackson's various law clerks, colleagues, Nuremberg participants, and notables from throughout the world have highlighted activities at our center. And in coordination with venerable places such as Chautauqua Institution, the city of Nuremberg, the United States Supreme Court, our friends in Moscow, among other locations, we've been able to advance the legacy of Justice Jackson through education and exhibits and by pursuing the relevance of his ideas now and in the future. This has been an exciting 10 years, and none of this would have happened without the broad community support of which I see in the eyes of everyone who is present here today. I thank you really from the bottom of my heart. My eyes will start to well up here in just a second as I reflect on the early days 10 years ago with Carl Kappa, Dan Braddon, Betty Lynn A, Harold Adams, Henry King, Whitney Harris, Bernie Meltzer, Stan Weeks, among others, who were so intimately involved in sharing a vision that the world would be a better place if we can embody the legacy of Robert Jackson's. 10 years, and this is the first 10 years, and may there be many more 10 years. And I've been honored to be chairman of the board a board which consists of an amazing group of individuals. And let me just call out them, and then when I get done calling, if you'll please stand up, those who are in attendance today. The Honorable Stan Lundeen, Joe Zanetta, Jeanette Carlson, Randy Sweeney, John Anderson, John Barrett, the Honorable Willard Cass, E. Barrett Prettyman Jr., Thomas Loftus, John Jackson, and Tom Hagen. Would you all please rise? They are the folks who just provide countless hours and, and their times and talents accordingly. I've been equally honored to be able to work with so many members of the global community, all of which are mentioned in the program. And if you can see in the program, it's an extensive program. And our goal was to pause, reflect, and to thank all those who were part of our world. And I really, from the bottom of our heart and on behalf of the Jackson Center, we thank you. Let me underscore what Adam had said early on, that I would like to thank Ron Hermans and E. Bear Prettyman Jr. who have made this a very, very special evening and there's obviously more to come. Tonight is an opportunity to bask in the reflective glory of the first 10 years of the center. The Jackson Center was established to honor and advance the legacy of a distinguished native son, lawyer and judge, Robert H. Jackson a man whose character and achievements evoke words such as justice, fairness, and integrity. The center honors him and advances his legacy so that each succeeding generation will have access to his work and ideas and be inspired to apply his concepts of justice to contemporary concerns and situations. As I conclude, I'm pleased and excited about the future of the Jackson Center. I'm pleased and excited about the plans being formulated by the board of directors for the next 10 years of programming and collaborations. I'm pleased and excited about the election of Stan Lundeen as the new chairman of the board. At this time, I'd like to call up Stan Lundeen and, and give him the gavel of for chairman of the board. Jack Nobody will ever replace Greg Peterson. <laughs>